If you haven't already heard about it, the new M3 MacBooks are killing the hearts of modern music producers, and many people have already conducted performance tests and figuring out what's better compared to the previous generation. And let me tell you, it's not looking too well. But is this really Apple's fault, or is there something we're all missing here? Let's find out right now. Ever since the release of the M1 silicon chip, people have been raving over how well they compare to the previous Intel-based Macs. And I have to agree myself, coming from a 2015 MacBook, this thing is a beast. But I'm glad I waited about a year after its release to actually purchase one because of this one fatal flaw compatibility issues. Pretty much every audio workstation was incompatible with Apple Silicon. Well, that was if you weren't using their native software, Logic Pro 10. But even then, if you used any third-party plugins, more likely than not, they wouldn't work natively with your new machine. Now, Apple's workaround for this is to run applications through a setting called Rosetta, which essentially gives you the ability to run any program that used to work on Intel chips with the new M1. And this still applies to modern day MacBooks. And what's funny about all this is it's not the first time Apple has created a problem for people in the music industry to have to worry about whether or not they should upgrade to new technology. And where Apple has released a new version of macOS pretty much every year, it makes it very hard for manufacturers to kind of catch up and figure out how to optimize it for it to even work in the first place. And where Apple does make so many changes within their operating system, that's what makes it undeterminable whether a certain application will work on it natively or not. And this is why when a new version is released, most manufacturers, especially in the music production industry, recommend that you turn off automatic updates and don't update to the next operating system until you know for sure that all of your current software actually works. And just to make matters worse, the newest M3 MacBooks have just given us another reason for music producers not to take the upgrade. If you would even call it that by now. Why Apple, why? A YouTube genius by the name James Zahn, or Zan, Zane, I'm not sure, has conducted beyond enough tests with Apple's OG M1 Pro chip with the M2 Pro and the M3 Pro. And I highly recommend checking out that video where he gives a deeper explanation. But in a short summary, he pretty much explains that most of the popular DAWs such as Pro Tools, Ableton, and even Apple's native Logic Pro aren't utilizing all of the cores within the new chips. And basically what he does to do this is he takes a bunch of CPU intensive plugins and determines what cores within the Apple system it is actually using between the M1, M2, and M3 chips. But this isn't the case for every DAW. If you're using Reaper, Cubase, or even FL Studio, you are in luck. These programs actually do end up using every aspect in each of the 10 cores within all of the pro versions of the Apple Silicon chip. So what do we do as a consumer? I already hear it in the comments now. Just buy a Windows computer and you won't have any of these problems. And all I have to say to that, is absolutely not. Well, at least not for music production and or video editing or some kind of content creation. And that is just my opinion. I know plenty of users that have used and still use Windows to this day for that kind of stuff. But in my opinion, it's just easier for me to do what I need to do. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I would love to hear what everyone thinks about this because maybe there's something I'm missing on that, but I've had nothing but issues when it comes to my workflow with Windows computers. And if you are as hard headed about using Apple products like I am, you know that switch between operating systems is not very optimal for our daily lives. And really the only solution that I have to give to the average consumer is don't buy the newest products. No matter how innovative they make it out to be as great as these operating systems are, you don't know what they can change to make things way more difficult for especially the manufacturer standpoint but for the consumer standpoint it's just really confusing and a lot there's a lot of hidden stuff that isn't released to the public right away and yes on average the product may be better for the average consumer but that we're not the average consumer music producers do not averagely consume things that doesn't sound very right but you know what i mean we literally have to force ourselves to do extra research to make sure if we are going to make an upgrade that everything is going to be properly compatible and i'm hoping apple doesn't screw this up in the same way that they do with their macbook as they will with the vision pro coming out hopefully this spring it's a lot like buying a new car if you have the extra money and you want to potentially be a guinea pig for a product that is not very well known to the public, then go for it. But me personally, I usually wait about a year or two before I buy any new tech product. 
unless there are a lot of really good reviews ahead of time within that year. I didn't upgrade to the M1 chip until about a year after it's released and after all the third party plugins that I had finally had updated versions for Apple Silicon. And it has been one of, if not the best product I've ever invested into in getting a faster workflow and a more efficient way of working on a computer. And I highly recommend whether it be the M1 MacBook Pro or the MacBook Air for anyone going into music production. And whether or not you're using a MacBook or a Windows machine, just know that you're probably always going to have to do some kind of research to make sure that what you're running and what is considered an upgrade could potentially risk you either losing projects you already had and not being compatible with the new software or whether or not even the upgrade is beneficial to you at all. And that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Be sure to check out James's channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.